Hello and welcome back to another F1 Fantasy video. My name's Tom and in this video we will be looking ahead to Spain but first we need to look back at Canada and I know that might hurt a few of you but we're going to do it anyway. So yeah, the kind of layout of this video being the team selection video, I'll have a quick look back at what happened in Canada with my team and then we'll have a look at some of your teams as well. I'm going to bring out the violin because that's what we do here. We commiserate, we don't laugh, we just we commiserate with uh, all the poor people that got terrible scores. So we're we'll doing that uh, in just a minute. Um, and then we're gonna have a look at the driver focus. Um, there's, um, this weekend we'll be looking at the Mercedes guys. Mercedes are co currently, you know, they've just sprung onto our radar very much over the last couple of races, particularly what's happened in Canada and going forward into Spain. So I'm gonna have a look, close, closer look at some of the stats between George Russell and Lewis Hamilton. Um, think about whether we actually want them in our team going forward. I know a lot of people jumped on them already. Um, myself including with the Mercedes constructor but yeah uh, so we'll have a look at that and then we'll have a look at some actual team selection kind of ideas that I've got for my team uh, going forward into Spain which will ho hopefully help you kind of kind of reflect on your own ideas and help you pick your own teams as well um, so yeah let's just get straight into what happened in Canada I'll have a quick look back because it was a really interesting kind of going into the deadline it was FP1, FP2, FP3 mixture of wet wet um, wet track and kind of drivers got kind of all over the place everyone was kind of a bit of a mix the ferraris you know looked like they were struggling but i don't know if i truly believed it myself that they were really struggling that much but you know it turns out they were um mercedes looking really strong like how much trust did we put on them um and it's just it was so wide open really really interesting and the end result is a huge variety of team selections um going uh, going into canada uh, i personally chose this team uh, for a couple of reasons one because you know, after watching the practice sessions, um, I kind of just knew, and I think we all just knew that it was going to be a mad race. And when you're expecting chaos, I kind of wanted security. And so that's why I kind of put the Max Verstappen security blanket on. Um, I could have gone with Hamilton. I was close to going with Hamilton, but if I went with the Hamilton um, build, I would have um, had Hamilton and Leclerc, which would have been appealing for potential budget gains. I would have used the autopilot, but um, because I wasn't sure exactly who was the best. So I kind of didn't really want to use the autopilot in the end. Um, so I decided Max Verstappen was the safest bet. You know, when the, when chaos reigns, then Max Verstappen is likely to still do fine. So that's why I put the two times on him. Um, and that opened up the opportunity to stick the Mercedes in um, as a constructor because I did have a good amount of faith in them, just not perhaps quite enough to really fill my team of Mercedes assets at that, at that time. That may be changing, we'll see. Um, and then, yeah, the, the rest of the guys kind of speak for themselves, kind of budget filler, some budget um, gainers, hopefully, in Stroll and Sonoda, although Sonoda obviously dropped back towards the end of the race. And then the Ferraris themselves, we all know what happened with the Ferraris. It was a disaster, in fact. Why don't we move into the violin section uh, of this week's video and commiserate. Remember, we're commiserating with these people. Try not to laugh. Here we go. Bring out the violin. So. First of all, bring out the tweet from Ferrari himself. Putting a difficult weekend in Canada behind us. Now the focus turns to Spain. With a little fist. It's like, yeah, we're going to have motivational speech. It's not going to work, Ferrari, for all these fancy managers that you've let down. First of all, we've got David, who quite, quite honestly says, this is awful. Yes, the scoring system needs to rework. Thankfully, decided on autopilot. Rip. To my goal of top 100. He did go autopilot, but he did have the Ferrari double DNF, the Sergeant DNF, and the Leclerc DNF. Equivalent of four DNFs in his team. Still managed 109 points <laughs> considering, which is actually not that bad. We move on to Luke, who again, not the worst score in the world. I've dropped though from 5.6 to 12k global in the past month. It's still a fine rank, but that's quite a drop. Uh, could be worse, but I'm sick of getting all these minus 20s. The only weekend I've avoided was Bahrain. A DNF every week, apart from the very first race. Pain. Berridge brought in Leclerc in place of Lando. 50 points. Lando scored, I think, 40 points. That's massive swing. And this one, Satan's people. A minus 17, two times on the clerk. Thought we could get away with Logan Sargent being in his team for a little bit longer. Didn't, didn't plan, didn't pan out. And then the doubled uh, Ferrari DNF as well. Christian Deer dropping his friend in it. 
uh, minus 45. Just look at this glorious team. The double on Perez, double DNF Payne, Albon DNF, Sergeant DNF, Leclerc DNF, double Ferrari DNF, minus 45 points. Leclerc's tier is an aptly named team, maximising the budget here, going into Canada full of confidence, and he comes away with one point fewer than he left Monaco with. Andra, I've highlighted here, nothing is lost yet. Some great positive speech, but he came away with 21 points in Canada, so I'd argue probably quite a lot has been lost. Charles Leclerc, two times. Sergeant, minus 19, and then the double Ferrari. Clayton, from the top 500, tremendous rank, to the top 3,200. Help, it hurts. 13 points. You're sat in the top, comfortably in the top 1,000, and then you score 13 points across the weekend. Savage, as we look at, once again, the combo of the clerk two times, Sergeant, and Ferraris. Matt Hughes just says, Welp, minus 12. Oof, just look at that block of red. Minus 16, minus 32, minus 19, minus 16, minus 12 for the weekend. And to finish off the violin this week, we've got Barry, who says, Season, season destroying week. Ocon and Bottas both look good until you hear that I transferred out the Haz drivers for them. I transferred out the Hazes, who scored roughly double what Ocon and Bottas scored, comboed with the double DNF from the clerk, the triple because he's got the Ferraris. DNF from Sainz, DNF from Sergeant, McLaren's really propping it up, but not enough to finish on minus 49. And now we move on to the driver focus. We're trying try to lift, lift everyone's spirits a little bit now, hopefully. Um, we're going to have a look at the, the driver focus, and we've got George Russell and Lewis Hamilton on screen, because, you know, as, we, as I've of course, previously touched on, the Mercedes are suddenly looking good. They're bringing in upgrades. There's a lot of chit-chat, uh, extensive chit-chat about the new front wing, and there's further upgrades coming in Spain, confirmed with Toto. As we can see there, we have some new parts coming in Barcelona. That should help us, I believe, is to do with their floor. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's what I've heard from what I remember. Um, so, yeah, more upgrades coming to the Mercedes, who have already, you know, shown that, you know, sticking it on pole. Hamilton was pretty dominant through the practice sessions, and if he could just qualify well, he seemed to have lost his touch with qualifying a little bit, but if he could just up his qualifying game a little bit, we could have been seeing, like, you know, both George and Lewis fighting for the win. Um, they, they weren't far away despite you know Lewis starting all the way back in what was it P7 I want to say um, but he still managed to kind of yeah work his way forward almost got on the podium uh, but not not quite but yeah still a great great weekend for both of the Mercedes boys even though George did drop back a little bit and that's the thing I've highlighted actually on screen at the moment the, the only real thing the only real major difference between the two is the positions gained from George Russell is the second worst on the grid this season which kind of goes to show I guess how well he is actually qualifying and he's just not able to sustain that through the race for whatever reason and meanwhile it shows that Hamilton is not qualifying so well but is able to push forward so obviously that's actually quite good for Hamilton not qualifying so well as long as he can continue to like push forward get the overtakes get the positions gained it's good for fantasy points however when we're picking these big heavy budget guys costing us a lot of money we kind of want them a bit more consistently to just be on the podium I'd probably rather pick someone that's going to like qualify third and finish third then pick someone that's going to qualify seventh or eighth and hope they push forward to like fourth or something it's just yeah um i'd rather have that kind of trust and consistency however you know we are talking about lewis hamilton here he's not just like some random guy that's uh, pulled up and says Good, can i have a can i have a race it's lewis hamilton so i think if he can just kind of tweak his qualifying whatever's going wrong in the world is qualifying this year if he can just tweak it a little bit push forward a little bit get a slightly st better starting position then he should be able to hold out or push forward the mercedes just look really strong all of a sudden you know, we've been talking about at the beginning of the season, the Red Bulls looking like far and ahead of everyone. Over the last few races, the Ferraris have kind of closed, closed that gap. And then more recently, sort of since Miami, 
the McLarens are close that gap and we're having this conversation of the top three, the big three. And now Mercedes are very much knocking on the door or even opening the door to having a discussion of the top four. And any given weekend, like any one of these guys could actually win a race, which is super, super exciting uh, as an F1 fan. And also super exciting for F1 fantasy managers because it means lots of stuff to think about. Lots of variation in our teams. We've been crying out for variation. Think back to last year when we had that triple stack of Red Bull and Aston Martin. And now we've got such great variety. People going to the Ferraris. People trusting Mercedes. People still backing the Red Bulls. Some people just piling in on the McLarens. It's it's fantastic. So yeah, I have gone a bit off topic because I've still got <laughs> I've still got George George and Lewis staring back at me over here. But yeah, um, in terms of like average points, points per million, and everything, um, I kind of take that with a pinch of salt, grain of sand, because uh, across the season it's not been great. But then the points per million, it doesn't look great. Zero point seven five and zero point five nine. But as you can see, they're sixth and ninth. It's actually not that bad. I think just everyone's kind of maybe a bit more overpriced this season and therefore the points per million look worse than what we're kind of accustomed to um so actually yeah being sixth and ninth for points per million is actually not that bad ownership really really low for both of them uh really really low for for george russell like less than 10 percent currently owning him I don't know if that's uh, still the case yeah still the case looking at the marvel screen um and then also the fact that they're both b tier assets so obviously you've got lando and verstappen who are now up in the a tier so whenever they do well they only ever go up by sort of 0.1 point 0.2 point um nearly fell off my chair then <laughs> um and these guys are still in b tier so as long as they have a solid race as we saw um last time out they should go up by a million george only went up by 0 0.3 last time out that's probably because he sort of dropped back a little bit didn't quite um didn't quite what did he score? He scored 27 points. Yeah, so not quite enough to get the million rise. Whereas Lewis Hamilton, with the benefit of having the fastest lap as well, uh, also managed to get him uh, managed to get him a one million rise. So it's really great they're able to do that. And there are a couple of fastest lap opportunities for the Mercedes. Of, I think they've picked up three fastest laps so far, which is like a third of all the fastest laps we've had this season. So Mercedes kind of interesting in that respect. And the fastest lap. I believe also goes towards the constructor as well, if I'm remembering correctly. Um, so the Mercedes will pick that up. In fact, we can check that. I've got this on my other screen uh, from Canada. Fastest lap, yeah. So the constructor gets the fastest lap as well. So as long as George and Lewis uh, continue to get fastest laps, which I'm not saying they're going to do that every week, but they seem kind of capable um, of doing so, then that also benefits the constructor, which is pretty great. Um, so yeah, my overall kind of thoughts and feelings on the Mercedes is they're pretty good because they're, they're cheap. They are slightly cheaper than the likes of Leclerc, Norris, was well, a lot cheaper than Norris, and like five million cheaper, pretty much. Um, they're cheaper than everyone in that kind of category. Cheaper than Perez, but cheaper than Sainz, etc. Uh, I think um, Piastri even, yeah, Piastri twenty one point six. Um, so overall, they are like the cheapest of the the big heavy hitters, if you want to call them that. Um, so yeah, I do think that they. And now we're having these these teams kind of develop where we're not just having one premium driver with Max Verstappen that's kind of splitting, and we're ending up with teams that have like the Clerk plus Hamilton, um, or whichever one of those drivers you want to kind of shove in there. Um, I think that they become a great option as kind of support for that for that. And in fact, why don't we have a look? If I bring my team up at the moment, this is my team off the back of Canada, and I'll show you what I mean. So a lot a team I was considering strongly for Canada was actually a Leclerc Hamilton build. So we're starting to see this sort of team structure develop a lot more um from from various managers where we're not sat on you know basically we've been liberated is what i want to say we've been liberated by sergio perez because his poor performances have meant red bull are a little bit off the menu at the moment um there's just no point in going for them as long as he continues to struggle going out of q1 every every race dnf in every race it's just we're not going to touch the red bulls until he can give us a bit more confidence and that freeing up of the funds has led us to all these different team selection possibilities the fact that we don't have the most expensive assets in our team with Verstappen necessarily or the Red Bull Constructor means that we can pick teams like this where we have these kind of two big heavy hitters, which is great considering we've got like the lights of the sprint weekend, for example, coming up in Austria in a few weeks time. Um, I could be looking at potentially using autopilot then or um, not autopilot the there are three times. Sorry, I got autopilot my brain from Canada, which I never end up using it. But anyway, um, yeah, so we could be using like the three times on for example, Leclerc, back him up with Hamilton, although I'd probably be looking more towards, as we're on team selection part anyway now, looking more towards Lando Norris, to be honest. And then for my budget, that frees up anyone from Carlos Sainz down, which looks pretty great. I can you know, maximize the budget here of two free transfers and go into um, the Spanish Grand Prix um, with a team like this, which looks pretty phenomenal to me. Um, and you know, Lando Norris <clears throat> is kind of, for me personally anyway, he's kind of, 
more or less in that category, at least in that discussion alongside Max Verstappen. And not just in terms of um, pricing in the game, but just like as an actual driver in terms of consistency, in terms of trust, in terms of the driver of the day potential, which is just crazy. He keeps winning driver of the day. Like uh, he's just got such a big um, fan base amongst F1 fans that people just keep voting for him. As soon as he has a reasonably good race, he just gets driver of the day. So, you know, put the two times on that and you're looking at outscoring Max like he did in Canada um, on a more regular basis. Backed on the fact that the McLarens just look really strong at every race they go to. You know, in the last year or so we've been talking about McLaren are great in high speed. Um, we need to put focus on the tracks where there's high speed corners, you know, like the looks of Silverstone, Qatar or whatever. Um, but now they're not just good in high speed. They're just strong everywhere and they're capable of winning. And I think Lando Norris may very well have won if it wasn't for the safety car uh, in Canada. Um, so I do think that Lando Norris for me is kind of in that, discussion like i say in terms of the consistent trust trustworthy two times driver um so yeah for me personally i've just got enough budget for this um and that's kind of enabled by the fact again that mercedes is kind of on the radar now because before mercedes really came about in the last week or so for me i wouldn't have really considered them and i'd be looking much more towards the mclarens and you know with the mclarens it kind of ties my hand a little bit more personally with my budget 17.8 uh, if anyone's got you know an extra three what, three, four million, then they could get someone like a, a George Russell in there perhaps uh, on, on top of this team, which would look pretty phenomenal, to be honest, if we could do do that. I could even potentially, yeah, I'd have to go with, go with Sergeant, unfortunately, but I could even go with a team like this, um, which also looks phenomenally strong, to be honest. Um, I could probably get rid of the Sauber, in fact, go with Hogenberg. So yeah, you know, the wild card is still very much an o open option for me. Um, and I do kind of want to revolve my team around. I still, I still trust the Ferraris, and I still think they'll be fine going forward. I'm not just going to write them off because of what happened last week out. They have been performing very well up until that point, and I still think they're good for building budget, being under 25 million. Um, but yeah, I could very much see myself potentially using the wild card going for a team like this. Um, trusting the McLaren strongly, you know, backing them strongly, and getting a touch of the um, the Mercedes cover in there. As I've, you know, talked already quite a bit about the Mercedes, I think that they are really coming through. They're getting stronger and stronger each race. And yes, I know lots of other teams will be bringing an upgrade, and I think the Red Bulls are also bringing an upgrade to Spain as well. So that'd be interesting to see how that propels them or not propel them. We'll kind of see how that plays out. Um, but the, the truth of the matter is, everyone's kind of piling upgrades, I guess. So it's about really being. Uh, remaining focused on, on what's happening in the practice sessions and picking your team accordingly uh, kind of based off that but this is more or less kind of the team structure I really don't want Sergeant in here to be honest I don't, I don't want Sergeant in here so if I didn't want to go with, uh, like a Norris then I could maybe put my faith back into like a Charles Leclerc um, and like a Piastri or whatever and then I don't know how to settle for settle for a team like this or something, for example. But of course, everyone's budgets are slightly different. I know some people will be two, three, four, five million cheaper or whatever, uh, or less than me. But I do think <clears throat> if that's the case, and the Mercedes continue to grow, I don't think you're going to be left behind because I think Mercedes has suddenly, you know, Mercedes has suddenly put themselves on the radar, and I think that should enable more people to get kind of uh, better, better built teams. So if you are slightly lower on budget, I think Mercedes are kind of looking like a potential good ticket into joining uh, people with higher budgets, as well as the fact that, that you know, if you go with a team similar to this, if you're struggling on budget, you look at what we've got here. We've got sub 25, sub 25, sub 25, sub 25. All these four guys, um, you know, the two constructors plus Leclerc and Piastri, they're all very capable of getting, having a race win. Um, and they're all capable of getting those 1 million rises, which would be phenomenal. Um, so yeah, I do think if you're low on budget, you could certainly consider a team like this, for example. Um, for me personally, uh, I'm very much leaning towards kind of splitting split my my team towards this sort of direction. Um, bring back the has, where's he gone? Oh, I can't quite get there. Point three short, I thought I could afford him, but I can't. So I have to settle for, settle for Albon, unfortunately. Um, but yeah, that's kind of where I'm at the moment, to be honest. Um, I am also considering just kind of more or less doing nothing and continue to kind of grow a little bit whilst Lance Stroll is still in the C tier before he goes up to potential B tier category. Once he hits 15 million, he won't get these big price rises anymore. So I could also potentially just sit on this, keep trusting in Max Verstappen, particularly the Red Bulls, have that strong upgrade um, and continue to kind of grow my budget via the, the two constructors down here. Plus, hopefully, Sonoda picks up a little bit. Um, Lance Stroll, I could even consider like dropping Sonoda down for like a has because the has just look good. I know Monaco happened. Um, but just in general, I think that the hazards look good for a growing budget. So I could very much just kind of stick where I am. And that would also kind of open up 
three transfers going into sprint race in Austria. Um, but I think I'm more leaning towards that kind of double premium build. So probably dropping the likes of Stroll. I'm not overly happy about dropping Stroll because I think he's good for building budget for like another race or something. Or not, maybe another couple of races if he goes up 0.5 and then another 0.5, for example. Um, but I'm very much interested in the likes of Lando Norris, potentially Carlos Sainz, home race in Spain. Um, so maybe perhaps going with a team like this as long as the Mercedes continue to impress me. If the Mercedes don't impress me so much in the practice sessions, then I'll probably be looking more towards the McLaren constructor. So that's kind of where I'm at at the moment. As always, happy to give you some feedback on your teams in the comments below, catch me on Twitter, etc., etc. But that's it for me for now. I hope you've enjoyed the video um, and I'll catch you again soon for some more F1 fantasy content. So, ciao for now.